How the heck are you, everybody? I'm Fastidious. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to a hero guide in Watcher of Realms. Today, we are talking about Greed. Greed is an epic AoE mage in this game who does a little bit of everything and does it very, very well. He's got DPS, he's got crowd control, he's got the rarest debuff in the game, magic resistance reduction. He's fantastic. And as of today, now every player in the game has total access to him. He's 100% free to play. With the update last week, he became the Day 28 Login Reward. This was briefly an issue that Moonton remedied. Older players have now all been sent to copy. The last copies were sent out today. So we all have him. Let's see what he's all about. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty, first off, big thank you to Dolores, my community manager, who made this beautiful infographic behind me. We'll get into that in just a second, but for now, let's head into the game and start talking about Greed. Guys, Greed is such a fun hero in this game. You are going to absolutely love him now that we all have him. So, Greed, he is a dual faction member. He's in the Nightmare faction and the Cultist faction, and both these factions, as you're going to see, fit perfectly with his kit. Uh, you want him super high attack speed. You want, whether he's DPS or like a debuff spammer, you want him going quick. You want him getting these basic attacks, this really crazy one off as much as possible. Being in the Nightmare Faction when you run a comp like that helps tremendously. And then for Cultists, if you want him putting out DPS or helping DPSs, he's perfect because he puts out crowd control of his own. So that's gonna help with their uh, damage bonus they get from their Lords. Uh, or if he's not the DPS, you wanna help other DPSs, he's got that crowd control. So it, it really is a, uh, He's, he's fit very well. He's got excellent faction synergies. More on that later. Uh, let's just talk about Aesthetic. Probably the most drop-dead gorgeous man in the entire game. Uh, you know, breasts for days. What more could you want out of a two-headed monster? Uh, no, jokes aside, I think he is really cool. Uh, very strange. Uh, clearly a reskin of Twin Fiend. But hey, I'm all for it. Uh, he looks like a rare hero, and a rare hero he was no longer. <laughs> he was now no longer. Uh, I'm pr pretty happy to have him, if you can't tell. I'm very happy to have him. Let's do a basic overview of base stats now. So, something you have to know about Greed, because a lot of you probably are like, I need that AoE DPS mage, I need that AoE DPS mage. Greed can be that for you, but you have to be very careful when building him on what stats you choose to prioritize. Obviously, we'll get into those specifics. However, let, I pulled this, uh, let me pull this little list up. Um, I built this for you guys. He has the lowest base attack of any viable DPS of any epic mage in the entire game. So what do, we, what do I mean by that? He's the fourth lowest. You can see three below him, Aeon, Mari, and Laurel. These guys have basement, basement, non-existent base attack, right? They only exist as crowd control heroes or spammer debuff heroes, something like that. Greed is the first of the bunch, the lowest of the whole bunch of these many uh, these many heroes with actual DPS potential. He has the lowest base attack. So when you build him, you have to be cognizant of that. Probably the reason they did that is because in a lot of ways, he does not have to use as a DPS unit at all. That's very much a choice you're gonna make. So be very cognizant of that when we talk base stats. However, let me pull this away for a second. We can discuss um, his base HP because he's got such low base attack, but he is such a rare hero, they compensated and they gave him the highest, highest base HP of any epic mage in the entire game. You can see here, it's coming up on 9,000. That might seem not, not like that much, but next up, I believe, is going to be Raiden. He is in second place. We can check his base HP out very quickly. He's only at 8,700. So of this huge list, I believe it's 16 epic mages in this game. Greed comes in at number one when it comes to base HP. Now, these kind of things that are being thrown at you in terms of base stats are gonna be relevant uh, in terms of how you wanna build him, and it kind of guides you, right? They're basically saying, hey, you could use him as DPS, but hey, look at this, we gave him all this HP, not that much attack, maybe you should also use him as a spam god, right? As some kind of debuffer, some kind of dot damage, some kind of crowd control unit. So well, we'll break that all down, but before we can do that, we have to talk about attack speed. So you guys know I love my attack speed. I always prepare these little charts. Greed has a very high base attack interval, the second highest available in the game right now at 3.5 seconds. Uh, so it takes a lot to make his interval even reasonable and it's super important. When we break down the skills, you'll see a lot of his kit is built, built around his basic attack. The only way to increase the frequency of that triggering of him doing those attacks is by increasing his attack speed and thus reducing his attack interval you can see here to get into something reasonable let's call it let's knock a second off 2.5 seconds you're gonna need to build at least 112 additional attack speed if people have been using greed up to this point and you've really been struggling with him whether you're trying to use him as a as a dps or as some kind of debuffer or a crowd control this might be why you were struggling he really really needs a lot of attack speed normally let me just show you mari for example 
Normally, when we talk about these units that really shine in terms of placing debuffs or doing crowd control effects, things like that, they tend to have much lower base attack speed, so you can get them really moving rapidly, right? Mari has a base attack interval of two seconds. Greed, because he's in this kind of limbo state where he can do a little bit of everything, he does suffer in that aspect, and it's something you really have to be cognizant of. So let's check out my hero roster now so we can check out my greed. So where is this fella? He's hiding right over here. Here you can see my beautiful, beautiful twin-headed boy. Uh, let's go to skills and let's have a chat. So no talent, that saves us some time. However, his skills are really gonna inform this thing that I've been touching on and I'm gonna get into right now. And that's that you can really build greed two ways. So he does have strong DPS potential and you are going to see that in this video. I'm gonna highlight him completely soloing at only my awakening in level one without ridiculous gear he's going to completely solo gear raid 118 obviously no power dominance proper solo not a, not a single other hero on the roster pretty amazing very much drawing from special k gaming joe go check him out joe check him out uh however he can very much be built and this is how i choose to build mine as you're going to see later he can very much be built and shine as a spam god, as I like to call it. Someone who is just going rapidly, getting lots of rage regen attack from a super high attack speed, getting his base attack off as much as possible, and kind of being a debuff unit. And also, actually probably as good a time as, as ever to mention, because we're gonna talk about skills and this is not gonna show up, but it's very interesting. Also get some cool dot damage going. So what the heck am I talking about? This is, might seem totally out of left field. To me it did as well, but I've done a ton of, t I've been filming Greed stuff today for five hours, just to peek behind the curtain. This stuff is a lot of work. Greed, as you can see, with these little descriptions. He does AOE attack, he does control, and then he does burning. Well, keep that in mind, this burning thing. So dot damage, damage over time is what that stands for, right? Burning. Greed does burning. Okay, so let's get into these skills. I'll actually break down on the skills, but I just, I need to get this off my chest because it's crazy. Uh, I've studied all of his awakenings. I've studied his skills. I've studied his non-existent talent. My greed is max level, max promotion. Doesn't say burning once. I have read this all, we will read it all together. No burning. However, this is just an added bonus and it does seem to trigger from his basic attack. So another reason that you might wanna build him in this super fast spam build, right? However, we gotta know about the skills before we can talk about the builds. So the skills, his A1, his, or his basic attack. I always say A1 because I'm used to other games. His basic attack deals 110% AOE damage to multiple enemies. Unclear how many, but I think it's 10. At least seven, I think it might be 10 because it's triggering left and right, center, everywhere, right? This is not just a multi-target. This is a proper AOE, and that is why he's really able to shine as an AOE DPS when other AOE heroes in this game really have like multi-targets. So they're hitting three enemies or five enemies. Greed is just slapping everyone, and it's pretty cool. So 110% AOE damage to multiple enemies in range with a 50-50 chance of doing one of two things. He can either increase his range, so broaden his range, hit more, hit more enemies potentially, or this is what's really key, he can inflict mas magic res reduction. So M res reduction, ma magic resistance reduction. This is a very, very rare debuff. Maybe you've never seen it before. He's one of only three heroes in the entire game to have it. And now he's absolutely the only accessible hero that has it now that he's a free login reward hero. So what does this do? Totally different than like increased magic vulnerability to increase your magic damage. Totally different to, you know, in increasing your allies penetration. Totally different to decreasing the defense of your enemy. This is a unique debuff. Minus 15% magic res. So however susceptible they normally are to magic damage, now they are more so. This is different than vulnerability though, and that's important because it stacks. The only two other heroes in this entire game that can do that are Ajax, who has the same drop rate as Legendary Lords. He's shockingly difficult to do. And Virna, but not even just Virna, like I have Virna, right? No, Virna at A1. She only gets it at Awaken 1. So pull one of the rarest Lords in the game, or Lord rate heroes, Ajax in the game, or pull one of the rarest normal normal legendaries in the game, pull her twice, then you can get this, otherwise you're gonna have to get greed. Uh, and we got greed, no reason to be greedy, right? So what is so cool about greeds on top of this, maybe even making it cooler than Ajax or Vierna? Where Ajax and Vierna, it's people within tiles of them, so it's almost like an aura skill, they directly apply it. Greed just applies it when he hits on his A1, on his basic attack. The problem with it though, is it's an either or. So it's a 50-50 chance whether he's gonna increase that range or he's gonna apply the res reduction. So this does add RNG into the kit and it is very frustrating. You can see I have him awaken one for a very important reason regarding the skill that we'll talk about very shortly. Now to his passive, soul reaping. Drains the victim's soul after every kill to increase attack by 15% for 20 seconds, stacking up to three times. This is only relevant if you want to use him as a DPS. However, if you use him as a DPS, like you're going to see on our 119 solo run, he's going to have like 100% uptime easily. 
on that increased 45% attack, which is really important because he has such low base attack. This might be another reason why they chose to give him such low base attack because of 45% multiplier on top of whatever you build on him because this would be a post-deployment post increase, right? Uh, it would be really powerful if he had like 4,000 base attack. So that's why they gave him like 3,000 potentially. Now onto his ultimate, and this one is a doozy, an absolute wall of text. Keep in mind, no mention of burning it. So, and you're not going to get one. There's no mention of it, but he definitely puts it out. You're going to see it in battle. I'm like, how, where are these burnings coming from? They're coming from here, him apparently. If I'm somehow missing something, please let me know. But I've, I've studied this kid. I don't see a single mention of burning. Gathers energy and releases a soul orb upon hitting the target. Dealing AOE damage equal to 240% attack. So that first sentence, a bit long, but easy. He's just gonna gather energy, blah, blah, deal AOE damage, it's gonna be 240% of his attack, right? Now for the weird stuff, the greed stuff, the flip of the coin stuff. Creates a purgatory that can either inflict slow on all enemies, so in either Oregon, right, it's a 50-50. He's gonna inflict slow on all enemies, it's a nice slow, a 75% AOE slow, or deal 15% AOE damage per second, lasting for eight seconds. Airborne units take half the damage from the purgatory. Okay, so it's more of like a ground damage dealing effect. So what is relevant there? It is very much like every time you're flipping a coin. So with good RNG, let's say you want him as a DPS. With good RNG, you're gonna need him to trigger that second part, that 15% AOE damage uh, lasting eight seconds per second, right? So that extra 120% AOE damage, super strong. Let's say you're like me and you wanna use him as a crowd control guy, a debuff guy, try to get those magic res reductions. You need it to keep landing on that. There's no better time than for us to talk about Awakenings than right now. Uh, so is Awaken level five, probably in a lot of content. There's not so much content out on Greed now yet. There probably is a lot coming out right now. A lot of people are probably highlighting him at A5 because A5 is super strong for him. Those two effects, whether it be the AOE damage or the slow, A5, they both happen simultaneously always. So that RNG is eliminated and it's just super potent. You're guaranteed that damage and you're guaranteed that crowd control. It's awesome. Uh, however, I wanted to show a pretty accessible build. Sure, we get one free copy, but for most of us, the only way we're gonna get him to A5 is with Soul Stones. Uh, I am at 2,500 pulls. I've never pulled Greed. Shout out to Dan Heilman. I think it took him seven or 8,000 pulls before he pulled his, eight, uh, his Greed. He has basement level drop rates. So it's not so realistic for a lot of us to get him to A5. He might be a worthy Soul, soul uh, Stone investment for you though. It's definitely worth considering because it's so hard to get copies. That's how you're gonna get him to A5. That is super strong. However, let's talk about the one soul stone I did put into him. I've never pulled him. I did put a soul stone to get him A1 because this is really important because I freaking hate RNG. So this is regarding his basic attack, right? A level three basic attack. There you go. Increases basic attacks chance of triggering special effects by 10%. Two special effects are triggered alternately. So not simultaneously like this one. This one says special effects at the same time, simultaneously, right? No, this is alternately. However, it guarantees that you know what's coming every other hit. And to me, that's so important. So you could choose not to do this and just rerun, rerun, rerun until you get the right RNG you want. So like for me, the right RNG would be, he never increases his range. I don't care about that. Uh, and he always lands this magic res reduction. However, by making it alternately, because the magic res reduction lasts long enough, do they actually have a time on here? No, they don't, but just, oh, oh, here, four seconds. It's enough. If you get him fast enough, he's attacking. As you're gonna see the build we've got him, we've got him at 1.7 seconds. That's 100% uptime as long as he keeps hitting the same people with his big OOE, it works, right? Uh, so I highly suggest getting him to A1 if you wanna save yourself a headache and save yourself just the lunacy of whatever this kind of flip of a coin kit that he has is. So obviously I think his Awaken 1 and his Awaken 5 are the most important, but we should discuss his two through four. So at two, a little extra attack. If you are gonna run him as a DPS, he's got low base attack, so any extra attack he can get is valuable. Then here you can see, this is pretty darn nice if you wanna go for a proper DPS build as well. If you're gonna go DPS, you're gonna want him A5. Let me just say that now, uh, or at least you're gonna need really good gear to run him at A1 like I do. Uh, but let's show you here, drains the victim's soul after every kill to increase attack by 15% for 20 seconds up to three times. Now it goes up to five times. So instead of 45%, we're talking 75%. That makes a monstrous difference. Finally, A4, pretty simple, just plus 8% crit rate makes it slightly easier to build him. All in all though, very, very potent skills and they work exceptionally well. So you kind of have to make a choice when you go into your gearing, nice little transition, you have to make a choice whether you wanna use a DPS greed or like a debuffing and crowd controlling greed. Let's see about that.
Now back to our fantastic infographic. Thanks again, Dolores. And let me tell you guys, this was the hardest infographic we've had to make yet. And that's because I wanted to visually represent everything, graphically represent everything in one image, while also making it a very clear distinction between the two ways you can build him, right? So you can see here, we have these little slashes between the stats, and then we have two separate lines for the gear set. So that is to delineate between whether you're going for that debuff spammer build or you're going for the DPS build. So in your priority and secondary stats, the stuff on the left, that is what I think is important for running him as a debuffer. On the right is gonna be for DPS. And then for our sets, the top line is going to be your, your debuffer, your spammer set, and the bottom line will be the recommended DPS set. So just to get into it now, uh, and this is gonna hold true for like any debuff spammer build, that it's all about attack speed. You might be thinking rage regen, rage regen, rage regen. The more they're attacking, the more they are producing rage regen, right? Because you have rage regen attacked, rage regen percentage scales off of that base level, whatever that base stat for that hero is for Raging Attack. Unfortunately, we don't know. That information is hidden in the game. However, they'll do an extra percentage per attack based on what Rage Regen you build on them. However, it's only relevant if you're getting tons and tons of attacks out. So on these spammer heroes, you need tons and tons of attack speed. It's so, so, so important. Otherwise, you're just building them wrong, seriously. However, when you go to secondary stats, of course, Rage Regen still is important. And then I'm just gonna say HP percentage, because if he's spamming and he's debuffing, but you forgot to put any tankiness on him, it doesn't have to be much. If you forgot to put any tankiness on him, he's just gonna die. Then if we go to gear sets, uh, Whirlwind is the absolute no-brainer. Uh, I guess if you're very early game, you could do that tiny set that gives you a touch of extra Rage Regen percentage, but really you're gonna want Whirlwind super valued at 75 additional attack speed. It's gonna make your, your builds much, much easier. And then for gear set, I think Mana Spring as well, a no-brainer. Plus three Rage Regen auto, that means every second you get three more points of Rage towards your ultimate. Over long fights, that is super, super, super valuable. Uh, Mana Spring is the set you're gonna wanna go for that kind of build. Now, as we move to our right, and then we move to the bottom lines for our gear sets, move to the right on priority stats. If for a DPS, attack percentage is absolutely king in general, especially for him, right? Because he's hurting, hurting for attack with that low 3,000 base attack. Then crit rate. Uh, crit rate is a luxury probably for a lot of the mid game when you'll be using him. However, towards the ender, you are going to want him critting. You're going to want some big damage. Then for secondary stats, uh, crit damage is going to be important. When, when he crits, you want big crits, but attack will always be more important. Then I will put flat attack after. Uh, flat attack, a lot of people just ignore it. Flat attack super important, especially, this, it's not a priority stat, but as a secondary stat, it's something you're going to want to hunt for in particular on heroes with low base attack. He has low base attack. That flat attack is gonna be super, super strong on him. Even through the mid game, you could even run like a flat attack main on him uh, if it had amazing subsets, only up to a point. But with such a low pool of uh, attack, like base attack on a DPS hero, flat attack is not something that should be ignored. But there you go. Those are the stats you can look for in a DPS build. And finally, our bottom lines, Calamity, again, total no-brainer. I could have put uh, a little shout out to uh, Warlord as well, the same way I did for Sylvan Arcana. But I think a lot of people are gonna struggle to find good Warlord sets, but Warlord would be his best in slot. You get a 25% attack bonus, and then also 30 extra attack speed. But it is very hard to get good Warlord gear, pretty end game, uh, late to end game stuff. Calamity is just an easy shout. Same thing with the Wisdom here. Sylvan Arcana is just kind of a better version of it. I did include it where I didn't include Warlord because it might be worth throwing together really quickly a Soulbound Arcana set even if you don't have the best stats in the world on him because it is so powerful. He is such 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 a low cost on his uh, ultimate that it's going to trigger all the time. You'll get to your fifth trigger then you have a 50% increase in damage. Otherwise just the wisdom and extra 35% damage increase whenever, wherever, whenever it's happening that he's triggering that bolt. So there you have it. If you want a copy of the infographic, of course, as always, you can just message me on Discord and we will provide you with a lovely HD copy. Back into the game, you can see the build I'm rocking on Greed right now. Of course, I have to show off two builds of Greed, right? So I've already prepared a second build, which Morrigan is wearing right now. We'll talk about that in a second. But here you can see, we'll go really quick. You can see I'm just following my own advice. Um, I did want to actually highlight, because I realized I didn't mention it, how cheap that ultimate is. It's actually 300, 300 costs. It's, if, as long as he's, he's going rapid with that attack speed, you don't need Rage Regen. He's going to be triggering this ultimate all the time. Uh, it, it's tremendous. So once you skill it up, 300 costs is wild. Um, let's get back into though and talk about this gear. You can see I'm following my own advice, like I said. Whirlwind set, this doesn't matter. I was literally just hunting for the attack speed. I wanted to show you like the, the cheapest build I could get on him. Uh, I could go get that flat defense, flat HP. It wouldn't hurt, but I'm not dying for it. Here, I just picked something with HP bonus and at, that had a maxed out plus 16 flat HP just to give him some more tankiness. 
Uh, here we went attack bonus, I don't care at all. I just was going for my biggest attack speed roll. Here we did attack speed main. I only went to plus 14 because I only wanted to just get above the threshold just to show you guys. Uh, it is really easy. This is why I love these spammer debuff heroes. It's easy to build them. I went for some flat HP and then a mediocre, bad flat HP roll, terrible defense bonus roll, and then an okay average HP bonus roll just to give him some tankiness. And then finally HP bonus, he does need that some semblance of taking this, a little flat HP, and then of course an attack speed roll. So if you remember from the sheet, good memory, uh, you need plus 415, an additional 415 attack speed to get him to 515 to get that minus 1.8 second reduction. We got him to 421, quite happy about that. And as you can see, He's got a lovely 521. That brings him to the 1.7 second attack interval. To very quickly show you how we would go for that DPS build, uh, we will be, after our 120 fight, we'll use this build for him on 120. Then we'll take this gear I'm about to show you on Morrigan and put it onto him uh, for our 118. But you can see wisdom set, just like I said, and I even went for that crit rate bangle just to try to make an accessible build. I'll just click through these really quickly, but still not neglecting attack speed, not as fast as I would like him, but you know, it's good enough. All in all, you'll see that build on him shortly, but that's just to give you a sense as I click through the pieces. Let's go back to Greed now and let's talk about artifacts. So guys, it might've caught your eye in the infographic that I only placed one artifact and maybe you didn't even recognize it. And that's because it's a not talked about enough legendary artifact. And that would be the Nightmare Samsara, the Nightmare Samsara. And it is fantastic. You can see I've even maxed mine out. Uh, you don't need yours maxed out. If it wasn't maxed out, this would say 5% rage for every five attacks as opposed to 7.5% now. However, I love this artifact. So I really wanted to talk about it, so we maxed it out. What basically does is for every attack, so every basic attack or any other attack, you're gonna get a little in, uh, increase in rage. Uh, this makes it just even easier to ignore rage in percentage and go all out for attack speed because that's where you're getting your most bang for your buck. Uh, this guy's gonna be going pretty fast at that 1.7 attack interval uh, and it works beautifully. Uh, you might be thinking, all right, but then what do I use for a DPS? I will give a quick shout out to just general, any general DPS artifacts like Tier of Starlet. If you happen to have one, is very, very good. Um, I would also say if you want somewhere, uh, something like an alleged, an, uh, uh, mythic version, I can't even talk, version of the Nightmare Samsara, uh, Book of Distortion is very nice. However, specifically for the way we're going to use Greed, Nightmare Samsara, I do think is better. However, there is one legendary that will get featured in this video, and that is the Eye of the White Tower. This is a very, you know, free-to-play accessible, or at least early mid-game accessible artifact, so keep your eye out for that. More on that later, though. I do want to just say with the Nightmare Samsara, even if you're running a DPS build, your big DPS is going to come from your ultimate. If you're running a DPS build, as I said, you probably should or you very likely will have him awaken five and also have that awaken three for the soul, re soul reaping stacks um so you're just going to want that ultimate coming as much as possible uh especially because you're going to be running him in a cultist team right so you get that slow up it increases his damage you get the big ult extra damage uh the whole thing just works beautifully the best way to do that is going to be with this because even as even like i said even with the dps build you will want nice attack speed on him it, it just, it, it's a perfect synergy for him. So I do think this is, for the vast majority of content, the best in slot artifact. Moving right along, let's get into battle. What do y'all say? So we're doing gear aid one today, as I mentioned previously. This is where Greed's gonna shine, whether you use him for DPS or debuffing, spamming, crowd control, whatever. Uh, he's got AOE, you're gonna wanna use him in AOE focused content. So let's start it off. I've actually pre-recorded this battle so I'd be able to narrate over it. Here is our 120 fight featuring Greed. Uh, let's get it all up and running. You can see the power of dominance, of course, is off. Let's see the squad. And let's just start by saying it's a very, very strong team. You're not gonna be clearing 120, with the gear I have at least, you're not gonna be clearing 120 without a strong team. However, Greed is gonna do literally like no DPS. I'll show you, you'll, I'll show you the stats at the end of the battle but he is gonna enable some incredible DPS from our real shining stars, our Comet and our Virna, right? Our Cerberus, and Greed really makes that happen. Specifically, we're just leaning on that magic res reduction. Granted, we're bringing Morrigan as a Lord, so having extra extra crowd control effect is also very nice. So when he does happen to, if he was A5 and I was all, always triggering that slow, it would still be way better. Uh, but I'm able to get away with this A1 build because we also bring Lassier. He's got some slows, he's got some crowd control. All in all, pretty good stuff. You can see it takes a while to get Greed out. Uh, these are my initial placements. And I can also say I've never formally released a 120 walkthrough. So here's a little taste. We did do it on stream, so the content is up there. But down goes Lassier. And now we're going to get ready to start thinking about our boy Greed. We do have to place a healer. I just bring the Sandai here. I do think she's really good for this fight if you can build her. Okay, minus Sandai's at five stars. Um, so it's not too hard to do, and she does shine. 
Uh, we're almost ready for greed time. However, there's no real, we haven't needed him yet, right? Our nor so, so why would you use him at 120? A lot of people say you can only use greed up to 119. Why would you choose to use him at 120? Well, let's say these red blobby guys in this specific comp, it's very hard to deal with these red blobby guys, even with my super OP, uh, super OP magic damage dealers, right? These Virnas, these Comets, these Cerberuses. However, getting those magic res reductions, this is a reason to bring greed. You know, he's super high cost, but finally we have our 25. We place him down and very quickly, you're gonna see these numbers absolutely shoot up. I'll do a little demonstration after this um, live in the game, but it makes a pretty, pretty su substantial difference. And it literally, on these really hard stages where you're just pushing to the ends of your ability, having that extra debuffing or something really makes a tremendous difference. So between his slows and particularly just that high attack speed and spamming out those magic res reds, those magic resistance reductions, it lets our Comet and Virna do the job that they have to do. So if you watch my stream, I'm doing way better here, right? Or maybe about as good, but with a lot, this is like a no hassle fight. I do this fight mindlessly. Well, I still have to worry about the placements. That's why I pre-recorded it. But you can see we basically took care of all the red blobbies and those guys are the ones that really wail on the wall. We're easily over 50% health on the wall, which is basically the benchmark I'm looking for to make sure I can control the end of the fight. And all in all, pretty good. Greed is gonna die pretty shortly from these auras, I will let you guys know. However, he already did his primary job in this battle and it's it's pr pretty amazing. Uh, if, if you had watched me on stream or if you ever seen me do this before, attempt 120, uh, now of course I can farm it, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's very hard to deal with those guys. Not that you can't kill them, but they do way too much damage to the wall that now when these Baron Salem's and these uh, Stitch Carrions and of course the boss come down, you're kind of SOL, you know, you're already in, in a really tough space. Uh, so these, these are the aura guys that are gonna take greed out, but he's already gonna get some magic res reduction on these uh, Stitch Carrions, on the Baron Salem's, and we're kind of off to the races. Um, he, he really, it's someone people don't think of him because he does not have the DPS to do this. He would need ridiculous gear. He would need Dolores, uh, maybe even some other stuff. Maybe probably, definitely would need Morrigan, I think, uh, to really let him shine. Maybe you could get it going in a nightmare comp. I don't know if you had Torador, so you had the extra 30% extra chance to land those A1s. He really would be amazing if you had Torador, I should say. But he lasts most of the fight. He won't be able to tough it out the whole way, but he's getting some amazing res. And look at that. So she's coming down and already there's only 10 enemies, including her. So only nine enemies besides her left. That is really, that's more than enough. Finally, greed goes down, but we're already, the hard part's over, right? We've killed most of the aura guys, we've killed all the red blobbies, and we've killed a lot of the big baddies. So we're just kind of good, and now it's just a normal fight. I can probably fast forward slightly. You know what? Probably someone's gonna wanna see this as a walkthrough, so I'll let it run through. You can see I'm just timing out my ults. We've got Lassia ready. I like to trigger around the 30% mark uh, remaining bar in the jungle's grace countdown. Um, and then of course I always like to trigger Virna at the very end of Dolores' ult and look at that Virna took care of the rest Very nice greed's gonna come back up in a second and you see I will keep clicking on it because I did want to highlight what that magic res reduction debuff looks like because when a debuff lands on a boss You do actually get to see it. So unfortunately it is that flip of the coin, right? I like or actually here. It's not it's the every other so it's gonna take so every other attack So there he lands it you can see there Let's, let's get these last units down, and then I'll give it a click so you guys can see. And look, that's their that burning. Look at this comp. No one here has burning. Somehow greed has burning. Please get in the comments and let me know if you know where the heck this burning's coming from. I'm not complaining. I'm just confused. But there it is, that shield with the minus sound. I'll click it so you guys can see the magic res minus 15%. It's super, super potent, and I'm I'm super, super happy about it. It's tremendously rare, guys. Uh, you know, granted here, I'm not bringing vulnerabilities, right? So like, could we put Mari in Greed's spot? Sure, but let's say you didn't have the amazing damage I had, but you did have really good gear. So you were just trying to rock like, Lassira is more of a DPS and then Comet. Maybe in that Virna spot, you also have Mari, right? Or you use Aeon. Maybe you don't have Morrigan, so you're using Aeon. So Aeon's giving the vulnerabilities. And next thing you know, you have the magic vulnerability and the magic res, or the physical vulnerability and the physical res. Um, it, it is super, super important, you know? It's, it's gonna be, it, it, it made the difference. On this run that you just saw, it does make the difference. So there you can see, there's our level 50 Nisanda I pointed to. That's what we got. Let's check these stats. So you can see Comet and Vienna are the gods. Cerberus, super underrated for this fight. And he's doing no damage. He's out on the field for almost the whole fight, doing almost no damage. Granted, it's largely because of the build. He's in a plus four weapon, but uh, he did his job. And that's really, that's really what matters. And don't sleep on him for the late game. Could he do a 121 comp? I don't know, I can't even do a 121 comp yet, but who knows, maybe I'll figure it out and maybe he'll be the key piece. But I think this really just shows how potent he is in terms of debuffing and crowd control. 
All right, so in just a second, we'll go to 118, do that solo run with Greed, only Awaken level one, none of those amazing DPS awakenings, should be pretty fun. Let's make a quick pit stop at 119 on our way. You can see power dominance off again, and we're just gonna do a little test. I just wanna really demonstrate how potent, or how important magic res reduction can be in making the difference between having enough damage and not having enough damage. So we're just gonna bring Greed and Virna. It's gonna be pretty easy for us to see. And we're gonna focus on these Komodos, so these little dragons, these little crocs. You guys might be familiar from when I actually did clear 120. Uh, one of these guys survived forever, so he's kind of my nemesis. But let's focus on this and let's just look at these numbers. So look at this guy right here. Let's see what damage he takes. So 2403, 2403. That's what he's taking from my Virna, right? Now what happens, what damage is he gonna take when I put Ingrid? So 2403, 2403. Let's throw this on 1x, let's wait. And there he just landed, 3253, 3253. So 2403, 3253, that's all you need to know. 850 more damage, pretty freaking substantial, right? That's like one third more damage from the 2400 to the 3200. And that's all just on the back of greed, right? So now it's off, now it's the 2403, now it's on, 3253. It's, it's really that simple, uh, that, 33% more damage that he gets, at least this is, I mean, it's gonna scale differently depending on the enemies you're hitting and how hard their magic resistance actually is. But on things like this Gear Aid 1, when you have these really high magic res resistance uh, enemies, that really can be the difference. So let me just show you that combo. Look at that, super, super high. Greed's gonna knock 15% of that off. And then you can see damage up 33%. It's pretty amazing. Okay, time to do that GR 118 solo. So let's head in here. We can take Virna out from our previous test. We do have to go to Greed, strip him of all this good stuff. Let's do a quick unequip. And like I said before, we are going to go for this build with Morgan. So I really tried to do the most accessible build I could find. Obviously soloing is not like an easy thing to do. Even in my testing, it only works like 60% of the time, like I said, uh, but I will use this crit rate bangle uh, as against my better judgment. Uh, and then we're just gonna go all in on attack bonus while still not neglecting crit rate and attack speed. But getting the crit rate actually is gonna be quite easy. And I do think using the bangle makes it a bit more, you know, mid game accessible, even if I've not been using crit rate bangles basically ever the whole time. Uh, let's go to Calamity, find those last two pieces, and then we'll look at this final build. And like I said, big ups to that special artifact that we're gonna get in the mix. So here's our build. The BPA is actually slightly higher because we do have to take off this Nightmare Samsara. And we gotta find our special little new and improved Eye of the White Tower. So this is only at, right? This is zero level promo, right? Base level plus one. Compare that to our plus 25, five levels of promo Nightmare Samsara, Samsara. Uh, this thing is uh, about as easy to use, free to play friendly. You're gonna get it, you know? You can get this easily from non-mythic uh, flawless meteorites. You know, it's only a legendary. And that this is gonna do the trick for us. So if we were running Aeon, or we were running Morrigan, of course, or if we were running en any form of damage boosting, like any kind of buffing, so something like Dolores, we would not need this. However, because of his low base attack, and because we're trying to do something slightly silly here and do a 118 solo at only awaken level one, we do need that extra 12% is gonna make the difference. And heck, an extra 20 attack speed increase on top of that, because obviously with no allies, there's no adjacent allies, we're gonna be good to go. So let's look at that final build and then let's hop right into battle. You can see we got our wisdom set as I suggested. We've got a calamity set as I suggested. I really do practice what I preach. 52.2 uh, K BP. Let's look at this total stats. So just under 12 K attack. And you can see that's a bit low to try to be like a solo DPS for this kind of you know late mid game stage. Uh, pretty important that you have that post deployment additional plus 12% attack. If we look here though, the attack speed is not rapid, but it's something, 2.4 seconds, we'll take it. That's 148 additional. Crit rate's very nice, thanks to that bangle, 96%. Crit damage is quite low. We do have a pretty high Rage Regen build. This is slightly just by coincidence of the gear I ended up putting on him. So let's get this thing going. And I do wanna start off by saying this is going to be as literally hands-free a walkthrough as you've ever seen. Uh, it's a very unique circumstance that we only have one hero, but because we only have one hero, there's no extra strategic deployments we have to do. There's nothing for me to think about. Let me throw this on 2X real quick. Um, and his auto, uh, his ult is full auto. So there's literally nothing for me to do. So I'm gonna say a couple things, but I think that I'll just turn my camera off, turn my mic off. We can kick back and enjoy the greed show. Uh, there you can see though, this is what I was talking about with the RNG. So he triggered his ult and we, we rolled poorly. We got the slow. The slow is not a bad thing, but when he's trying to solo DPS, DPS it himself, um, it's, it's not a great thing. We really want that to trigger, that every second extra DPS, that is how we're gonna be able to do this. Uh, so there is RNG, it might take you guys a few attempts if you choose to do this crazy thing. Otherwise, just get your greed to A5 if you hate the RNG. Uh, but much, much, much easier said than done. 
I want to say one more thing, and then we'll uh, we'll focus on the battle here. Uh, you can, as you sh as I showed you guys, Greed is wearing the exact same gear as Morrigan. Uh, Morgan has much higher base stats. She's a legendary lord, a super powerful, super rare hero. Um, and as you saw uh, from the previous battle, 120, she did next to no damage. She did like just over 5 million damage or something. Granted, she was not on the floor the whole time. She was not deployed the entire battle, but she didn't do that great, right? And now Greed is doing excellent right now all by himself with literally no support, no lord, no help in the exact same gear with worse base stats for that to scale off of. Now I'm pointing this out to highlight the fact that you should really just be cognizant of how much harder those 19, 20, and 21 dungeons are. Um, the, um, the thresholds you have to clear in terms of defense and resistances are just tremendous. So do keep that in mind. Let's enjoy the Greed Show. Let me turn myself off. See you guys shortly. All righty, looks like our boy is cleaning up all right. Just wrapping up this battle as he takes care of the new boss. Uh, or actually, I'm the old boss. That's, that's like a little Freudian slip there. We do have a new boss coming. They're reskinning Gear Raid 1, so there's a little teaser for you guys. It will take a second, as you can see. The damage isn't huge, but he handled it. No problem, no problema. I do want to say, uh, I've probably run this, this exact comp, comp, this exact hero and this exact build. It's one dude. Um, but I've probably run it 10 times just to see how it works. And I think we've been successful six out of the 10 times. So fortunately, we got it right here. Very nice to see. Um, and look at that, should we sh save this as my new clearance? Honestly, why not? It's not like I do 118 anyway. There you go, thank you, greed, but no POD, absolutely excellent. Um, but yeah, that just goes to show you, he's beyond capable as a DPS. Uh, 36 million damage, the damage here doesn't really matter because obviously depending on how long the fight takes, uh, that's gonna be the damage, but any damage that is there to be dealt, he will be dealing it. Uh, so that is greed. I guess I just kind of want to chat about synergies and then wrap up with just concluding thoughts on this hero. Uh, so in terms of synergies, uh, quite obviously he's going to synergize exceptionally well with anyone from his cultist faction. He also, guys, it is super worth noting, as I've said, he has dual faction membership and he's very, very, very good in the Nightmare Council. Actually, how about we pick it up there because we've been mostly running these cultist comps and having this cultist-based discussion. Uh, attack speed is what the lords here bring. Uh, and attack speed, as I've mentioned many a time now in this video, is essential on greed. You want that A1 going off as much as possible, even as a DPS, because that's every A1 is just more AoE damage. Boom, boom, boom. Every hit is more rage regen based off of attack. Boom, boom, boom. Scale, scale, scale. There you go. That crazy ult, crazy damage, crazy slows. Um, and then, yeah, with the A1, with the basic attack, that is how you are, or not, sorry, with your basic attack, that is how you're getting that magic res reduction that is so important. So he fits very nicely into here. There's only two other platform DPS, right? So he's going to work exceptionally well in a Nightmare team. But I do think his key synergies are going to exist, at least for the content you're going to use him, because he, he truly shines, I guess, outside of Nightmare Council faction trials. He's really going to shine in things like Gear Aid 1, um, anything with huge bunches of AoE mobs to take out. Uh, so he's going to fit beautifully with either one of the lords. Of course, he has slow in his kit. When you have A5, he's always going to be getting slow um, on his ultimate, and that is going to empower all the other DPSers here. Let's just click on Aeon to show that off. Um, increased faction allies damage dealt to enemies inflicted with any kind of crowd control. So, of course, stun, freeze, mobilize, slow very much counts. Um, so he's excellent for that. With that super low costing ultimate, he fit in very, very nicely. Um, all in all, just really, really good. If you want to empower him, since his slow is not so crazy, Mari is an excellent hero to run him alongside. If you had if you had Aeon as a lord, you had Greed, and you had Mari, you're going to have tons of crowd control growing, going at all, uh, all the time. Uh, it would work out very, very nicely. Where is she? Why am I... You know what? I always have, have trouble finding Mari because they show her when she's not max promo, so she doesn't have her white hair yet. So always confuses me. But yeah, Mari, an, an excellent shout to go with Greed. Uh, all in all, let me give my conclusion now. I think Greed is an excellent champion, a huge, huge ups, huge props to Moonton for writing this, not wrong, but writing this oversight that they made and getting everyone Greed. And it's I'm glad this video took, this video took me so long to film, guys. But I'm glad it took so long because while I was filming, I got the news in my Discord that the last few people that had not yet received Greed just received him. So uh, they had to wait like an extra week or an extra four days or whatever it was. But finally, everyone now, he's completely free to play, completely accessible to all heroes, both old, uh, all players, both old and new. And I think that's a fantastic thing. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you're excited to use Greed. Let me know if this helped. Like the video, you know, subscribe to me, share it with your mother. I've been fastidious. I'll see you in the next one.
Fast Didius, 